With so many of us now working from home, our commutes feel like ancient history. But without commutes and the physical and temporal separation from our offices, how do you stop feeling like you're living at work? Hi, and welcome to The Wake Up. I'm Jan Yakimovich, and I'm an assistant professor of organizational behavior at Harvard Business School. I study commuter behavior and people's passion for their work. Before the pandemic, the average global commuting time was about 38 minutes each way. Commuting was the bane of our existence, consistently ranking as the least enjoyable part of our daily lives. Yet while we all complain about our commutes, we still wanted that physical distance from our workplace. Today, we'll be talking about our new normal of working from home and ways to combat that increasingly blurry line between our workspace and our home life. Some of us have been very fortunate to have the option to work from home during this global health crisis. On paper, this opportunity should allow us some more flexibility with our schedules and workload. In reality, it turns out we're working more. A study in the National Bureau of Economic Research found that on average, we're working 48 minutes more a day, and that's without a commute or the usual office chit chat. That same study also found an increase in scheduled meetings and email activity, as well as a spillover of virtual communication beyond normal working hours. It's exhausting being in work mode all the time. And when you don't psychologically detach from your job, that means you're less able to replenish your emotional resources or fully engage with anything non-work related. This can lead to burnout and negative emotions such as guilt and hostility in all realms of your life. Not being able to transition out of work can also increase stress levels and adversely impact your overall health. Before, Commuting gave us the time and space to physically and psychologically transition from our home roles into our work roles and vice versa. Commuting helped us instill boundaries, allowing us to keep our roles separate from each other on a daily basis. And while we may not have commuting anymore, there are still ways we can rely on simple rituals and mindset shifts to improve our work-life balance and our overall well-being. First, Practice making mental shifts at the start and end of your workday, when you move from your at-home self to your work self, and then back again. I call this role-clarifying prospection, or thinking about the upcoming role you're about to take on. Doing so can help you remain focused on the tasks ahead, and you're more aware of when you're ready to transition roles. For example, when you log off of work, you start transitioning into your personal life self. You might start thinking about what dinner you'll be making with your partner or what activity to do with your kids, helping ease you into your new at-home role. In one of my studies, I found that people who engaged in this kind of forecasting and reflecting were less likely to feel stressed about their work and correspondingly, their home life. Now, this is a simple and straightforward strategy that anyone can do. Before you start work, simply ask yourself, what steps can I take to accomplish my work goals this week? How can I be more productive today so I can enjoy my night? And in the evening, when you're ready to log off of work, ask yourself things like, what can I tie up right now so I don't have to think about it later tonight? What am I looking forward to cooking tonight? By cognitively activating which role you'll be shifting into, you can be more effective and efficient at work and conversely more engaged and present when you're not working. Next, create a few rituals to start and end your workday with. Rituals are a series of actions or behaviors that are performed regularly, and they've been shown to produce a variety of benefits. They can help lower our anxiety before high-stakes performance tasks, increase our enjoyment of an activity at hand, and can even help us recover faster after experiencing a loss or failure. In one commuting study, my colleagues found that people who maintain small rituals on their way to work felt more excited about the upcoming day and less stressed out than those without a set ritual. Find a ritual that works for you. It might be making a coffee and enjoying it outside or listening to some music while you stretch. It could be taking a brisk walk to kick off your morning and then a quick drive around the block when you're done with work. No matter what your rituals are, make sure they're performed when you're easing in and out of the workday and are at least five to 10 minutes long each. Working from home has completely changed the ways we work and live. With no clear distinction between our offices and our homes, it can be difficult to find our balance during these uneasy times. But we can give ourselves a break by clearly distinguishing our roles before we enter them. Doing so will in turn help us feel more capable 
more refreshed, and more grounded. I'm Jan Yakimovic. Thank you very much for watching.